everybody, welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. Today in the news, it looks like we have one possibly final update on this whole Activision, Blizzard, Xbox, Microsoft, FTC, CMA, ABC, 123 deal. Because it's official, Microsoft reached an agreement with Sony to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. On Sunday, Phil Spencer took to Twitter to share, We are pleased to announce that Microsoft and PlayStation have signed a binding agreement to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation following the acquisition of Activision Blizzard. We look forward to the future where players globally have more choice to play their favorite games. Now to be clear, the term binding agreement, I think a lot of people online are taking that to mean like, it's forever everybody, don't stress it. But no, this is just till 2033 and after that they gotta rework it and come up with some other agreement. This is just a 10 year deal and whatever games are produced in that 10 years, it's gonna be on PlayStation. Obviously, this goes back to that PlayStation thing where they're concerned about giving PS6 hardware to Activision, but I guess we'll figure out that bit when we get to it. But after all the back and forth, after all the press and the attempts to sabotage and sort of ill will, but not really, we're still trying to be professional vibe that they were going for, it looks like they've come up with an agreement because after all, it's just business. Microsoft's original deal offer to Sony in January 2022 included keeping all existing Activision console titles on Sony, including future versions in the Call of Duty franchise or any other current Activision franchise on Sony through December 31st, 2027. The deal terms have clearly changed since that opening offer with an extension to 10 years that's limited to just Call of Duty. And with the merger being all but a certainty now, especially with the CMA and the UK being like, yeah, we'll work with them to figure something out instead of just like, no, 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 it can't go through. It seems pretty likely by the end of the year, look at this all wrapped up and, and we'll see what happens from there. I do think it's interesting that it's only Call of Duty now, which I'm curious what Sony was trying to fight for there. You know what I mean? Did they have any thought about, I don't know, Diablo as a franchise or any Blizzard products in the future where they were just like, no, nah, we're fine, which I wonder if that says a lot about what they think about Blizzard on PlayStation, but yeah, I don't know. I thought the uh, Diablo 3 version they made for PlayStation was pretty cool. I think a lot of people like that, but I guess it didn't really do well enough for them to be like, no, Call of Duty's fine. I don't know, it's, it's like when siblings get in a fight and they have to call a truce after a while just to like keep things civil. It's kind of what it feels like. Obviously behind the scenes, Sony's licking its wounds and Xbox is championing this victory. The question now is, will they be able to deliver? Right now they have 24 plus studios under their belt. Will they be able to come up with a reason for people to play on an Xbox console? Again, I still wanna work on this video about Xbox consoles because while Microsoft has computers on lock, when it comes to consoles, they're, they're still third. And I don't know if they're gonna try to hit us with an Xbox next or whatever the hell they're gonna do. I don't know what's gonna come next, but I'm curious how they're going to leverage all of this to become number one. Or if they're just gonna rely on Call of Duty, like here's the problem, one bad Call of Duty game and this whole plan is is in the toilet. So I don't know, we'll, we'll see. In other news, if, if you enjoy Assassin's Creed and have always wondered what it would be like to be the Assassino, well, Ubisoft, has got you covered. That's right, in honor of the release of Assassin's Creed Mirage, Ubisoft has teamed up with haptic technology company, OWO, to create a one-of-a-kind Assassin's Creed themed haptic feedback shirt. Now you will not impersonate Basim, you will, now you will not impersonate Basim, you will be Basim, or is it Basim, it seems like it would be Basim. Use your uncanny skills to avoid being seen while seeking justice using the OO system. You'll be able to feel your precise movements when you take down your targets, but beware, they're out to get you. Don't let your enemies get too close or you will feel the consequences. So if you got 500 bucks lying around, you too could be stabbed in an Assassin's Creed game. I think this is wild tech. I actually am interested in where this is going because look, we all know where this is going, right? It's not Assassin's Creed. We all know where this is going, right? On the OA website, they list all the different sensations you can experience, ranging from insect bites, being shot, severe abdominal wounds, and my personal favorite, ball. But here we are on the precipice of 
Another example of future tech, and will it catch on or will it just be another fad? I'm wagering fad, but that plus VR plus those gloves that I've experienced where instead of using controllers, you can use the gloves and it feels like you're holding a gun or it feels like you're holding a sword and has the weight to it. That stuff's fascinating. And putting all that together, where's my holodeck, y'all? Where's my holodeck? I'm going to hologram Commander Riker and we're going to go, I don't know, hit on some Klingon ladies. <laughs> I don't know. I am absolutely here for this, but uh, yeah, I I don't know if the text there yet for my weird twisted imagination. Anyway, it's Monday, so it means it's time for new releases. This Tuesday, July 18th, get ready to redefine reality with the click of a camera in Viewfinder. Viewfinder is a puzzle game where you utilize paintings, sketches, screenshots, photographs, and postcards in order to explore and reshape the world around you. And thanks to its player-driven narrative, you can choose to uncover the story underneath or just mess around with staircase puzzles that would make MC Escher blush. This game looks challenging and mind-bending and... I can't wait to give it a shot. And then on Friday, it's time to get your grow on with Pikmin 4. In this wacky real-time strategy game, players must utilize their squad of colorful plant-like creatures, aka Pikmin, in order to solve puzzles and explore the world around them. In addition to the gameplay that we've all come to expect from the series, Pikmin 4 introduces several new features, like an adjusted day-night system, space man's best friend, Ochi, and so much more. So congrats on the new release, all you Pikmin diehards. I hope you enjoy. If this game is anything like the previous ones, it will be a treat. I cannot wait to see more. Anyway, that is it for me. Thanks so much. See y'all tomorrow for another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News.